Hi friends, good morning. Friends from I am luck I am Vijay. I hope all of you are really doing good. Hi Mihir. Good morning Simran. Am I audible? Friends, am I audible? Hello? Thank you, Mihir, for that confirmation. So I'm just waiting for the rest of your friends to join in. And I could see only 35 students already on the call. I hope rest of your friends would join us soon so that you know we can start our discussion. Hi, Urja. Shakshi, Anand, Simran, Abhishek, Ankitendra, beautiful name, Rohan, and rest of my friends from I am Visakhapatnam. How is Vizak doing? Is it raining? Is it cold? Mona Lisha? Anuradha? Harshita, Saket, very good morning. I'll just wait for 30 seconds more. Then, you know, we will start with our discussion. Hi, Aman, Dhan Lakshmi, Chintala Pudi, Naveen, very good morning. And thank you so much for taking our time on a Wednesday morning for this session. Genuinely appreciate it. Just curious to know, are you guys back in your campus? Venkata Sandeep? Steve? Suresh? Shiksha, Khanna, Nishan, Suresh, Gurunadan. Very good morning. Namaste, sir. Nalar Kingla. All my friends from Orissa, thank you so much for joining in. Dhanyavad, both both Dhanyavad. Friends from Andhra, Andhra ki Namaskara. Chala, thanks, sir. Mir time to iskoni attend chastunara. And for rest of my friends all over India, thank you so much, friends, for logging in. Don't worry, the session is definitely going to be in English. It's just that at times I get a little carried away when I see people from uh, Andhra and Orissa, simply because of the fact that my roots are in Orissa, the border of Andhra and Orissa, not very far from Vijak. Yeah, so I speak. Uh, the language quite fluently. Very good. Hi, Kishore, Parth, Gopi, Vijay Gaikwad, and all my friends from I am Visakhapatnam. Okay, we have had enough of introduction and warming up and greetings. Now, let's get into our business. So friends, as I said, my name is Anil Kumar Misra, Misra without an edge. And this is my 24 year of practicing HR all through different sectors. Yeah. So I had glorious 24 years of practicing HR, started with manufacturing sector, then got into hospitality. So worked with Oberoi Hotels in Chennai as well as in Jaipur then moved to a company called Tesco and uh, worked with Putney Computers, IT services called, uh, you know, which is right now is uh, Capgemini because, you know, Putney got acquired by iGate. Subsequently, I got, got acquired by Capgemini. Then Tesco after Putney and uh, the UK retail joint in Bangalore. Then my 
my first chro assignment was with a company called uh, just dial that was in mumbai post just dial i was chro for fidelity in bangalore and it's been more than 4 years precisely 4 years and 2 months with my current assignment in delhi in noida precisely called magic bricks so how many of you are aware of the group or the company called times of india bennett and coleman very popularly known as bennett and coleman or times group 180 year old group typically when you open up newspaper you would see multiple segments and uh, 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 just a second friend yeah so uh, typically when you open a newspaper you would see sports you would see entertainment you will see re news related to matrimonial you would see news related to real estate so typically the times of india business the core business of newspaper still is up and running but the realization about two decades back is you know the future is of digital and hence today if you talk about real estate if you talk about uh, jobs if you talk about matrimonial if you talk about entertainment for each of this business we have specific digitized full fledged business which are independent you know pnl opportunity for example gana.com radio mirchi times internet or or probably you know times job or uh, uh, no, uh, magic bricks magic bricks is times groups entity separate pnl which is in its 15th year of operation right now and the beauty is two and a half years back we broke even meaning it's a profit making entity now friends in today's session what i want to do is i have talked about my journey career journey i have talked about the organizations that i have worked precisely with an intent that you know whatever we are going to discuss i am going to share as my life uh, uh, learnings would have reference to one of the company yeah or i would have learned in any of those companies yeah and hence i felt that is very important for me to set the context and uh, very good morning babesh and uh, so our topic for the day is how to stay relevant what are the trends that we are seeing what are the key learnings i have had in my which i feel is very important and hence this session and uh, definitely the intent is to share it with all of you but before i do that please also whenever you get an opportunity convey my regards to your professors and convey my regards to uh, um, behra mr behra in administration right a good friend of mine so convey my regards to him also for you meet up uh, i think i visited your campus about two years back some hriday that hr conference uh, that was happening and you know as part of that you know i was in vijack uh, and then since then i have not visited but hopefully when things are back to normal again then i wish to visit again uh, to your wonderful campus yeah and that beautiful city called vijack okay uh, now let me get into our uh, discussion how many of you have come across statement that people are an organization's biggest asset we all know i'm sure you know in our academia we would have studied uh, that you know whether you want to start your manufacturing or service sector typically you need few resources and those resources in management parlance are called you know five m's men material method market and money right these are the five m men includes both men and women human resources in common so in that context i am sure we would have come across statements like people are an organization's biggest asset have you heard about this statement i am sure you have heard about the statement that people are an organization's biggest asset my second uh, question the follow up question is how many of you have heard and believed in the statement that people are an organization's biggest asset thank you aman but how many of you genuinely believe that people are an organization's biggest asset good utpal maji 
Thank you. Saket is saying that, yes, I have heard about this and I strongly also believe in the statement. Great. Now, I'm sure I know you guys are going to hate me uh, uh, for making a statement like this. But the test, just think for a second because, you know, I'm going to challenge you sufficiently during our conversation with an intent to ensure that our learning is maximum. Would you take it kindly when I say that, no, that is wrong. That's a lie. And the realization right now is people are not an organization's biggest asset in general. Or people in general are not an organization's biggest asset. Why do I say this? Okay. Let's try and understand. Number one, every organization, they have an annual performance appraisal process. Just like our academia, wherein, you know, in our 10th and 12th, we appeared in board exams. And some people passed out with first. Some people did not also qualify. They failed, right? All sort of thing. In the same manner, friends in corporates, we have annual appraisal processes and we have something called bell curve. What happens is consciously, unconsciously, we were asked to find out who are our top talent, who are performance, uh, performance wise, who are our middle of the road who are our bottom performer or otherwise called poor performer. What do we do then? Then we allow them to improve their performance. We put them through a process very popularly called PIP, which stands for Performance Improvement Plan. Yeah. So you give them an opportunity, maybe three months, and uh, you expect people to show some visible improvements in their performance level. What happens? Some people pass out, some people successfully complete the PIP. Some people, even after giving an opportunity, they do not show any significant improvement in the performance. So what happens after that? You ask those people to get out of your company. You initiate exit process. Now, friends, this is one side of the story. Hence, my question to you is, if people are your assets, if all people are your assets, would you allow your assets to move out of your company is my first logic you would not and hence let's not fool ourselves and let's not believe in the statement fully that people are an organization's biggest asset i am saying people in general are not an organization's biggest asset number two second reason do you believe we are going through a, some sort of a crisis right now Answer is undoubtedly yes. The crisis, unprecedented situation called, unprecedented situation called COVID-19 situation. Yeah. So who are the people prone to job losses? People who are already at a higher salary bracket. Yeah. When organizations are struggling to survive, that's when, you know, they try and find out who are the people least contributing in terms of value addition, but are at a higher salary bracket. They are prone to job losses. And it's a fact we all have seen during this last six months that there has been plenty of job losses all around us, irrespective of the sector that we belong to. Right. Second point, friends, is people whose performance level is a question mark. They are also prone to job loss when organizations are forced to go for some sort of a headcount reduction during this difficult time, so as to stay relevant, so as to stay afloat, what they do is they try and put some filter. One of the filter criteria is to find out who are top talent and top talent organizations would not ask them to go. But people who struggle with performance level are the people who are asked to go. And hence, second argument, if people in general are your assets, would you allow them to go? Answer is no. And hence, Let's re-modify the statement. Let's not make ourselves fool. Let's not fool ourselves. Rather, let's try and re-frame the statement. So the new statement I want to, I want you guys to remember is: people in general are not an organization's asset. Good people are an organization's asset. Now you can say, Anil, that makes a lot of sense. But what do you mean by good people? Good people meaning people who are consistently top performer, 
good people are those who whose learnability cycle is very less people good people meaning who are aligned to the big picture in terms of contribution people good people meaning people who are willing to embrace the change these are good people and they are truly an organization asset mind you every organization is a business entity business organization profit maximization is ultimately the objective unless it's a service sector and you are in a uh, uh, ngo kind of a setup right and all business organization would want to have people hire and retain people who are consistently top performer who have fantastic attitude who are always willing to change and embrace the change right these are good people right and these are two assets in organization not people in general are in organizations asset that's very very big realization even during this unprecedented times and i thought let me share this experience with all of you with justification i'm not saying uh, i have already given you two examples i'm not saying for the sake of sake for the sake of creating controversy but definitely these are the reasons what made me believe that people in general are not an organization asset but good people are an organization asset yeah number 2 learning during this unprecedented time i'm sure again we would have come across situations like uh, statements like this is the new normal right this is the new normal right and i hate to uh, uh, say this but as a practitioner i do not believe in the statement i do not believe that there is anything called new normal why friends in 2008 we have seen the great reset and we overcome that now we are going through covid 19 situation can you give me a guarantee that tomorrow there would not be any other crisis there would be other crises in future as well every time there is a crisis as an individual both you and i or as an organization we try and put some systems processes in place to manage with the crisis and those systems and processes are not static they are super dynamic probably they become newer ways of doing things for a limited time frame yeah but they are not the new normal the moment you say this is the new normal it gives a feeling that as if this is static this is the mantra to deal with all crises no that is not the case organizations evolve try to put some processes around to mitigate the risk of a specific crisis till the time you have a larger crisis and hence i tend to believe there are nothing called you know there is nothing called this is the new normal yeah these are the new workplace trends but this is also evolving yeah how fine that is a, a theoretically you know what i believe philosophical statement but let's try and understand what is that is changing all around us right now during this time number one is work from home the flexibility workplace flexibility is going through a change friends and you this work from home is not an alien concept even before the covid 19 hit us all of us most of the organizations have had work from home policies in place so what has changed what has changed is the mindset of leadership member has gone through a change right now why because the moment you talk about work from home the assumption earlier used to be by and large assumption used to be work from home for it professionals for product professionals for tech professionals in it services forms makes lot of sense what is work from home for uh, support functions like hr like admin like call centers like marketing other functions right that has gone through a change yeah why because during april may june when we were forced to follow this lockdown measures we had no other option but to stay indoors but everybody expected us to contribute from home so everybody was working 
irrespective of the fact whether you are front of the house or back of the house everybody was forced to work from home and mind you the realization that we all have seen is when it comes to workplace productivity or productivity from home everybody irrespective of the fact whether you are it non it the productivity levels were equally high so that changed the mindset that yes work from home or uh, this kind of a workplace flexibility is here to stay yeah there are numerous benefits of work from home but for easy understanding of student community i have created one acronym a short form and i call it stop s t o p s for social distancing now if the who report got to be believed the virus is here to stay for quite long time the only way out for people like you and i to stay safe is to maintain till the time we have the vaccine in place for people like you and i so how can by not commuting uh, by not going to work work place and crowd uh, crowded places and work from home from that standpoint comes as a win win proposition for both the parties employee and employers and hence uh, i tend to believe that it is here to stay yeah number 2 so s for social distancing in the stop mnemonic t is for travel time friends it's a proven fact that by and large every worker spends about 20% of their productive time in commuting from home to office and office to home and it takes a toll on your overall energy level it drains your energy out and the best is when you are working from home you don't need to commute and hence it is assumed or presumed that probably the productivity level should go higher if you are working from home because you are not wasting time in commute yeah second argument is t is the travel time or commute time so that's also a win win proposition for both organizations don't need to invest in the transportation and you don't need to step out and waste time and drain your energy you can continue working from home and hence i believe because of those benefit work from home is here to stay third one is o o to me is office occupancy what it means is gone are those days during tough time organizations are least interested in put their money on real estate on fixed assets and hence the trend we are seeing is more and more people organizations relying on co-working spaces yeah organizations during this time are not required to invest in fixed assets real estate the flexibility when people are spread across north east west yeah in different parts let them find out the nearest available workplace co-working space let them go there if network or bandwidth internet bandwidth is an issue or they don't have a dedicated space for you know uh, resuming their day to day work so that is what is uh, we are seeing there is a surge in the demand of co-working spaces in tier 2 tier 3 cities as well so o here in the stop acronym is office occupants p finally p is for the pollution level yeah uh, ncr or any major cities in india today every city is grappling with the issue of pollution level and think of old age people think of young kids think of people suffering uh, with uh, asthmatic uh, kind of conditions for them when everybody was forced to operate from home it was a great situation for them and you know uh, the pollution levels were low and then you know people could you know easily and and very happily you know they can uh, co live with the environmental conditions during this lockdown period yeah so because of this work uh, because of this benefits i believe workplace flexibility is like work from home is here to stay and i'm sure you are following news there are companies who have already declared that you know they are going to follow work from home at least for the next one year 
and interestingly some other organizations also have announced that for all the time to come these are the functions who are continuously uh, they are not required to come to work they can continue to work from their home and those are the kind of flexibilities trend number 2 that i am seeing in uh, india definitely they are here to stay but here is a slight twist in the tale when people say work from home is the reality my counter argument is why work from home the flexibility rather the uh, the trend i am seeing is it could be work from anywhere not necessarily work from home so the trend is work from home will be changing to work from anywhere w f h will be changing to w f a in a high performance driven culture in a meritocracy uh, setup what matters is your net value addition your net uh, uh, now value addition to what you have committed not necessarily whether you have punched in 8 hours or 10 hours of work nobody bothers that so long as whatever you have committed in terms of your kra objective if you can fulfill then you know that should be absolutely fine with corporates corporates or leaders are absolutely fine with this and hence learning is more workplace flexibility whether in the form of work from home or work from anywhere doesn't matter even if you operate from the beautiful beaches of goa that should be absolutely fine so long as you add value you achieve the target that you were expected to drive that's the trend number 2 friends third trend that i am seeing i pray and hope that all of you should get job of your choice whether it is final placement or internships or the life projects that you aspire to get into but this year at least till the next 12 months my prediction is definitely we would see a reduction in the total number of uh, full time jobs employment activities when it talk when we talk about full time employment opportunities there would be a drastic reduction in the number at least in the 12 months time because organizations are waiting and watching how things unfold yeah across the globe and hence and second point is there are a lot many job losses and these people are also available in the job market yeah third thing is of course 32% of the uh, workforce of tomorrow will be dominated with the new kids on the block popularly called gen z these are typically the people born after 1995 yeah roughly around 25 uh, years of age these are the people who are the newer kids on the block yeah now friends when i said there would be a drastic reduction of employment or job opportunities for full time employees this year what it also means is it will in parallel open up another segment another industry called gig economy yeah this is again you know not something new we all are aware of this gig economy yeah what is this gig economy who are gig workers these are the people subject matter experts experts they come on service call people they come they gig and they are they get out of the company they are not married to any one company for example for ej understanding take the case of uber drivers take the case of amazon delivery guys these are not on the roles of the company they are independent uh, drivers available yeah whether ola ola or uber or anybody calls them you know they will go and do that they will earn their money and go they are not employed yeah similar this is uh, similarly if you need let's say you know your ac to be repaired what we do you call just dial or you call uh, urban company they come they gig and you know they take the fee and go out these are the examples when it comes to gig workers in blue collar friends the trend is we will see more of white collar gig jobs also available during this time rather in the last two quarter there has been a surge in the demands to the tune of 20 25% in white collar gig workers for example you need a you need a digital marketing expert you need a learning and development expert you need a, a, a data scientist but these people are available in market you don't want to invest 
uh, in a full time employee because this is a six month kind of an assignment three month kind of an assignment these people are available the beauty is you can get people from men you can get experience resource yeah now the good news is india already features amongst world's top 5 countries who are already using gig workers extensively so after it's us and china india is number 3 then comes you know mexico and uh, uh, japan and other countries yeah mind you friends gig is going to be very very big during this time or in the future globally it's estimated that it's going to touch 4.5 trillion dollar business in the next 12 months or so cut to india it's a 450 billion dollar industry yeah and it's also estimated there are another 5 million workers likely to join this gig economy in the next in the next 12 months time and hence friends the learning here is trend number 3 is gig is going to be very very big now you can ask anil that's great but what's in it for me now why i have brought in the point of gig economy is any adverse situation friends is a great opportunity for us to innovate and come out creatively yeah i am sure you are aware every crisis is a boon for some sector is a ban for some for example the covid 19 situation the industry which was majorly hit were travel management companies hospitality sector restaurants bar and lounges the manufacturing sector on the contrary sectors like education technology sectors like healthcare sectors like e-commerce grocery delivery and youtubers there has been plenty of you know development in this sectors so situation is same some are benefited immensely some are significantly impacted negatively impacted yeah but it's a great opportunity for people to innovate organizations to innovate example car manufacturing can you believe organizations who are into car manufacturing got into mask production organizations who were not into uh, e-commerce organizations which were not into uh, gross, grocery delivery got into grocery delivery why because it's a matter of survival how do we stay afloat during this crisis time so coming back to what's in it for students if gig economy is the reality is gig, gig is going to be uh, uh, really big in future request is or humble mission to all my school friend is during this time learning has to be your number one objective whatever assignment you are getting try and grab it with both hands whether it is your final uh, placements or it is summer internship or life projects because number one objective during a crisis during difficult time has to be whatever opportunity i cannot uh, afford to be uh, very uh, choosy by all means you know have your aspiration you wanted to get into consulting you want to get, wanted to get into fmcg sector but by chance if you are not getting that then grab whatever opportunity you are getting because nobody can take out that learning out of you and again when times are in your favor when things are back to normal you can encash this years or experience in your favor yeah so third trend is gig is going to be big now typically typically every organization during this crisis has gone through three broad phases how do we survive if you have survived how do we recover back the lost ground meaning april may june first quarter june july august april may june was horrible in terms of business there was no business at all Uh, june july august slowly you know things were the uh, uh, you know uh, lockdown measures were relaxed and then you know organizations could focus on a little bit of business but the focus during initial days was all about how do we survive and friends you are aware we have seen news organizations or startups or by and large every sector this is sector agnostic 
has gone for headcount reduction or have deferred their you know, annual increment have deferred their joining uh, uh, the, the the campus hire joining or complete freeze on hiring activity why because the focus was more around how do we survive because you have uh, people they got to be getting their salaries and you have vendors who have already supported you in terms of services and now you need to pay them the fee from where you will get this yeah and hence organizations startups the realization friends is the whole bubble about organizations valuation the game of valuation that we are world's number one company when it comes to rooms inventory when it comes to xyz we know that you know those uh, you know startup uh, firms who were playing the game of you know valuation that bubble has already burst so the realization right now is it's not here to stay so the valuation game is not the right metric for evaluating how good is the company so cash is king organizations with a healthy pnl balance found it relatively easier to manage and hence the future organizations if you want to be risk averse what you should be doing is focus on organizations who are profit making who are in this business for some time and there are plenty of e-commerce players also there are plenty of sectors who are doing good relatively they found it easier to manage this unprecedented time what we have gone through because future is also very very uncertain we don't know what kind of a crisis is coming one safe bet is joining a company where it's no longer a valuation game you can go ahead and you know give a full page ad in any newspaper and media but you know when it comes to crisis you don't think twice you ask people left right and center to get out of your company now was that a choice was that uh, somebody enjoys that answer is no but do they have any other way no probably the break even would take 15 years for such players to you know start earning the uh, profit and hence it's always for people like you and i it's a safe bet to join a company which is a profit making entity that's a realization friends one more learning during this time is there are five c's which are very very important which i have learned as a practicing chr yeah i will experience with you so that you know you know how to deal with people related issues yeah how sensitive are this number one any crisis you got what happens typically during a crisis what goes through our mind as an employee we feel are we safe what happens if you know some of my family members or i get infected yes. let's talk about covid 19 whether the company will take care of my insurance whether there is a tie up with any of the hospital whether there are you know ambulance services offered by company etc etc physical well of myself and my family that's on top of my agenda isn't it similar whether my job would be there or not because center and organizations are asking people to go and what would happen to me my job job security is also a top agenda during this time and few new ways of dealing with things right during this crisis we said that everything is virtual the onboarding happened virtually r and r happened uh, uh, no, virtually town halls happened uh, virtually with this kind of an activity work from home do i need to come to work how you know i am in sales function do i need to get into the field job so these are the curious questions in the uh, back of people's mind and hence first c very very important 5 c is what you know i am going to discuss before i end the session first c is all about communication when there is anxiety when there is uncertainty during any crisis first thing people want to know is communication and a leader or hr need to play a brave front and go ahead and communicate tell them about the business scenario tell them about why we are doing certain stuff then that brings down that anxiety level that comforts people so communication is very very important doing that in a timely manner rather overdoing in certain cases is also fine 
but communication is the first c and organizations or leaders who did that proactively found it relatively easier to manage yeah so first c is about communicating whenever you go through whenever you go through a crisis proactively go ahead and communicate it's a win win proposition for both number 2 is about connect man is a social animal we talk right so in isolation we cannot we all were used to work in groups in our campuses learn together study together uh, eat out uh, together or probably in corporates you know have meetings yeah cross functional meetings task force etc etc this covid 19 situation has forced us all to stay indoors so come uh, connect is very important so what we did is proactively pick up the phone talk to people hey how uh, just enquire about their well being or we used to have our evening parties through all virtual mode you carry your food i carry my food we will laugh we'll have a good laugh over some you know point and you know we will find out we will talk to each other and that happened even for you know young kids in their own groups because you know they were feeling stressed out so connect is very very important yeah third c is about catharsis what is this catharsis during aristotle time this was introduced and uh, catharsis meaning allowing people to vent out their anger their angst is good for mental health suppressing their thought process and anger anxiety is not good for mental health so allowing people to speak their mind so we had to handhold we had to train our uh, managers about the least that people deserve to get is give them a patient hearing let them speak their mind so people who are on their way out exit or people who were told uh, to you know leave then you know they come under a lot of stress and some people emotionally outburst some people uh, play the role of a critic some people they break down irrespective of and some people give you very harsh feedback but what you can do is it's definitely not the right thing to demean the dignity of labor yeah always advisable to hear them out understand what they are going through very very important third c is catharsis yeah and fourth c that's all about catharsis fourth c is all about compassion compassion is all about empathy yeah there is sympathy and there is empathy sympathy is oh sad to hear that you are you lost your job is is sympathy nobody wants sympathy compassion is all about empathy meaning you try to put yourself in somebody else shoe and okay i can feel what you are currently going through and hence once you internalize once you feel once you are compassionate then you would walk an extra mile to help somebody out so what we did i would be lying if i say that you know no we didn't ask anybody to get out of our company it happened even the entire recruitment team were relatively free during that time so what we said is you don't have uh, you know hiring pressure at this stage what the least we could do is help people in preparing their cv in posting it in on job portals and hr people are well networked and they get to know no first organization hiring so what we did is prepared their cv or did our, uh, the job posting and also help them out in terms of giving leads who are hiring in addition to taking the help of an outplacement agency yeah so doing all of this shows that you are compassionate about your people and friends mark my words that goes a long way how you treat people as a leader or how an organization or what all steps an organization initiates during tough time would be the true test of your character when chips were down how you perform is what people remember and hence very very important for us to make sure that you play uh, 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 the, uh, the the compassionate on on compassionate ground and last c is all about coaching yeah not necessarily you work from home after two months three months people realized then you know uh, we had to handhold and tell people because people uh, started also complaining that there is a mental stress 
In office, we used to work for eight hours, nine hours, and now the assumption is 24 hours because I am home. And any manager can call anytime. And if I don't pick up the call, then probably, you know, it's not viewed that it's viewed that, you know, I'm on my picnic. No, those were wrong assumptions. So we had to counsel. We had to coach uh, all the people managers in terms of it's fine if people do, did not pick up the call. Probably they are having a meal with their family members. Right. And then probably there is some other uh, exigency in the family. Right. So those are the five learnings in terms of C. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put it under C so that each one of us understand that well and remember those benefits. So friends, this is where we are. These are the five, six uh, big ticket, top of mind learning that I have had during this time. I thought that will be of use to you. And these are my experiences and the leadership learning lessons that I have uh, gained over my uh, 24 years of practice. And every opportunity is a great, uh, you know, every crisis is a great opportunity for people like you and I. My last concluding remark here would be, this is also a great time for us to focus on acquiring a new skill because there are few competencies which has gained importance, significant importance during this time. For example, your problem solving approach, your design thinking approach, your growth mindset, your emotional intelligence, your tech savviness, all of that has gained significant importance during this time. So how good you are when it comes to problem solving? And, and we have, we are surrounded and we derive uh, some uh, 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 insights out of the information available. And will that help an organization to you know, get out of a problem statement is very, very important. Beauty is we all have got plenty of time at our disposal right now. Make best use of this, acquire a new skill, that would help you out. Because typically we ask a question, Rohan Das, uh, uh, Naveen or Saket or Mahendra, the bigger question I would ask you, I want you to think about it is, why should anybody hire you? What is so unique about you is definitely a question Hard question, but we need to ask, introspect, and ask ourselves this question. Why should anybody hire you? What is so unique about you? Yeah? What it means? And then you can say, hey, Anil, interesting question, but are there any ways available? How can I find out what I'm good at? There are ways. 360 degree feedback is one. Johari window is other one. Gallup's strength finder is another tool. If nothing works, at least, you know, you have your close friends, family members, go there, ask them, hey, you have been observing, tell me what I'm good at. Yeah. And focus on that because last competency to my mind, what comes to my mind at this stage is your personal branding and networking skill is also equally important. Yeah. Do people know you in the industry? Can you reach out to somebody? Do you have your personal board of advisors? Yeah. Individual, you can reach out in case there is a crisis. If yes, then friends, you are well poised because the whole you are. Who is your competition, Simran? Who is your competition, Rohan? Everybody except you. Not necessarily in I am Vijay. It is in ISB. It is in FMS. It's in India. And why India? When we are talking about Industrial Revolution 4.0, when Klaus Schwab, the founding chairman of World Economic Forum, says Industrial Revolution 4.0 is about uh, Internet of Things, 3D printing, and all of that. Uh, it's also uh, tells us that the whole world is our competition. So we need to compete with them. We need to have something unique which would keep us separate. Yeah, and we create visibility for ourselves. So these are the things that I thought I should share with you within this given time constraint. So thank you so very much for your patience. Thank you so much for uh, 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 this invite. And uh, I thoroughly enjoyed interacting with you. And now this is time for us to go for question and answer. Over to you. And also let me know how was the session? Did you learn at least even if there is one or two uh, takeaways for each one of you, key takeaways, I'll feel that, you know, the session is successful. So my taking out one hour time, 
you investing in one hour on a witness the morning is useful yeah so friends it's question and answer time let me know if you have any questions i'll be more than happy to answer and by the way i started my own youtube channel 5 months back and you know since then every week i make it a point to interact with uh, students uh, of you know some b school because you know end of the day i believe my 23 24 years of experience is meaningless if i am not in a position to share my practical experience the nuances of dealing with people and what are the learnings and the channel that i have created is called dr hr yeah and uh, there are plenty of videos i hope you know you would find it interesting whenever you get some free time please do go through dr hr and yes if you like please do subscribe to dr hr channel also yeah that's one way of you and i staying in touch and you getting to know the uh, uh, global best practices when it comes to hr the interview questions uh, there are plenty of videos so please go through that i hope you would like it yeah and at 46 at this age i started this channel so i also need a little bit of encouragement and motivation so please subscribe to dr hr as well thank you saket for the feedback i'm glad that you know the session was useful and thank you simran for that assurance absolutely could not agree more to your point aman emotion drives behavior and hence both emotion and behavior is very very significant when it comes to managing people at work but uh, aman online also there are plenty of psychometric tools you talk about firo b enneagram or disc profiling or thomas profiling each one of them really give us insights in terms of an individual's dominating behavior and hence uh, of course you know initially to be vetted when you and i meet up in person but very very important and you know online assessments can also reveal your dominating personality style thank you aratrika chintapudi navin great uh navin uh, if you are more interested to know about economy there are three videos in dr hr so please go ahead subscribe and go through those videos you would get to know more about uh, what exactly is the concept so there are fundamentals uh, mentioned in the video and there are two, two senior veterans um in gig economy they are also talking about this so three videos are that i would recommend you to go through dr hr those videos that will help you out in understanding uh, the nuances of uh, managing gig economy better very good so guys saket which management domain finance marketing hr etc do you think has been affected most uh that's a tough question to answer saket but it's it's a function agnostic by and large every sector has been uh, uh, impacted and every function also got equally impacted difficult for us to talk about finance marketing and hr um, because you know by and large these are the enabling functions but uh, every function uh, got impacted equally when it is product and tech relatively those it uh, is you know because it's a demand and the supply game so uh, that is even in a better it's poised in a better you know, situation but uh, at uh, sake knowledge economy and gig economy are in trend what are the changes in hr uh, this interaction uh, nothing is changing aman but the bigger challenge is when you are a contractual or a gig assignment uh, worker then you know you do not have the social uh, security uh, uh, in your favor unlike a full time employees or but you have the flexibility that's a plus point and this is the minus one unfortunately in india unlike the western world it's absolutely fine even if you work in a coffee shop uh, that if, th there is absolute dignity of labor but in india there is a taboo okay the moment you say that you know oh where is uh, aman working no aman is a, 
freelancer is a gig worker then the social taboo is still there in india oh you are not a full time employee you are a contractor so but over a period of time even in india that will go through a change because this is the new trend as i said 4.5 trillion dollar globally is no joke and in the western world in the us uh, in other western world definitely 60% of your jobs are now gig assignments and in india it's picking it up yeah fantastic questions interesting questions thank you so much friends again i thoroughly enjoyed interacting with all of you thank you so much for this opportunity and uh, 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 stay uh, indoors stay happy stay safe yeah be positive and test negative thank you so very much take care bye bye